morning. We're Team 7. Our team is composed of Alejandro, Chabelle, and myself, Victor. And today we're going to be presenting our gearbox design. There's certain design parameters that we have to meet. The first one being that it has to transmit 7 horsepower, along with the fact that the input shaft is going to be rotating at an angle velocity of 11 20 RPM and it has to be reduced to 70 RPM. The gear ratio to accomplish this is going to be 16 to 1 gear ratio, and the input shaft and output shaft have to be aligned parallel and also have to rotate in an uh, opposite direction. Uh, the size has to be, in terms of size, it has to be a uh, small volume along with uh, the lowest weight possible. It has to uh, be used in high precision application and their light shock uh, work in room temperature and fortunately the cost, per, the cost parameter is not, a, it's not a problem so we're not going to concentrate on it. The real world application is going to be from a speed reducer from a geared elevator. Uh, Hub City Inc. is the manufacturer that makes it, and they have a parallel shaft speed reducer that works a very well close to line to the specs that we were given. Uh, their gears were made out of heat treated alloy steel gearing, which is why the, their gearbox is a lot smaller, using a lot less gears, and ours has a lot more. Uh, the gears themselves are not hard to find. Uh, Boston Gear has helical gear drives. Um, Brew Gear has high efficiency in gear reducers, a high selection, and as previously mentioned, Hub City Inc. has a, a numerous parallel shaft drives for any number of applications. The parallel shaft reducers are usually made out of helical gears due to the fact that they're more sound in operation and that the, their teeth can hold a larger load. Uh, there was a similar model found, uh, a shaft helical gear motor design in terms of the size that we were using and the gear ratio that we, were, we had. Its cost was $2,164 and its gear ratio was 15 for 26 to 1. Now I'm going to pass it over to Charles. So for the first alternative design, we choose two stages reducer, uh, two stages reducer gear, which consists of five gears. Uh, they were helical gears uh, with four shaft. Uh, the, the advantage that we choose this because the tip uh, the tip precision mesh and less volume, but the gear didn't mend and pass the horsepower and torque, and the number of things were not readily available. For the second alternative design, we went to four stages with users in order to distribute the torque through the whole system. Uh, we went with a two to one ratio in the four stages, uh, either in the last one that we put an idle gear to change the rotation in the opposite direction, four shafts were assigned 1.25 uh, inches board diameter. The advantage is that we have a uh, small weight and it's stronger than the helical. Uh, the disadvantage is that gear uh, didn't pass the torque and more power. For our, turn, for our design, our actual design, we also went with the four stages and the same ratio and the same number of gear, but we chose helical with a 90, uh, with a 20 degree pressure angle that are stronger than helical. The gear met the desire and power and the power required and they were already available in the, in the Boston catalog. The only disadvantage that we got is we went, uh, we got one inch offset between the input and output shaft. Uh, this is the, from the Boston catalog, as you guys can see, those are the, uh, the gears that we chose. Uh, this is AMA bending calculation through the whole, uh, through the whole stage of gears. You can see we're passing, uh, the, all the values are greater than one. Uh, this is the, con uh, the I'm up for the wear of contact. This is the same, uh, the greatest, the maximum stress that we got is one, 167,000. Uh, uh, for stage one, this is the lowest calculation in order to prove that uh, the gears pass the torque and the horsepower requires. You guys can see we're getting uh, over seven horsepower through the whole stage. Now I'm gonna pass it to Alejandro. Okay, so for the actual design, this is the latest setup. For well, both the gearing, we went from gear 2 to gear 10, and then here is the position of some of the bearings that we placed on to hold the shaft together. Now for the actual design, we wanted to make sure it was as inexpensive and easy to produce as possible. We also wanted to keep the volume down to a minimum, and we found that some of the best ways to reduce weight was through actual design, and we wanted to make sure we used 99% reliability. Now this is a picture of our finished product, as you can see the whole enclosure is fully sealed. Now this is the picture of the exploded view, all the parts coming apart. Now this is a short video that we ran to make sure that the transmission was doing what it's supposed to be doing. We're going to play a short clip for it. Now
Now, this is the cost estimate. Um, we estimate that the two parts in total were, is going to be about $1,700. We, and we know that the prices of the parts can fluctuate depending on the quantity. And the cost and the time of the assembly will also vary depending on who's going to be you know, building it. Now, for the maintenance, we estimate the breaking period to be around 1,500 hours. We also um, we want to emphasize on getting oil change around every 5,000 hours. And we're building the actual transmission around 10 million hours. Now here's just a list of the building materials that we used. And in conclusion, we wanted to make sure we designed a transmission that had a 16 to 1 ratio, which we did accomplish. We did all the gear specifications according to AGMA in order to find the, the best materials for the shaft. And we sorted out all the parameters that we needed to solve in order to conclude our presentation.